it's that time of week again, Red and Green Army, Liam Cook here from CUTV, ready for another episode of Team Talk, coming to you from the new Albany Club in Earlston, the official partner of Coventry United Football Club, and today, I think there's a fair few of you who have been waiting for this one, a true Coventry United legend, two titles, 140 appearances, don't ask me how many goals he scored, because I honestly haven't got a clue, but this guy is one of the most technically gifted players in Coventry United history, and as I say, a real fan's favourite. Please give a big warm welcome to the one and only Gift Musa. Gift, thank you so much for coming, mate. Uh, thank you for inviting me, and just get the opportunities to kind of speak with the fans and they can watch this and yeah so thank you guys thank awesome. you. They, they've been waiting for this one i mean everyone's just like when are you going to get gifted when are you going to get gifted i'm like guys come on just, just, let's get some more laptops on <laughs> but we've finally got there and it's the, first, it's the second time we've ever been able to do one of these interviews in person due to covid thankfully lockdown is now over and you can get back, back to doing what you want to do exactly exactly yeah yeah so Obviously, I think amidst the COVID, it's been chaotic, but actually, it's looking hopeful we can kind of meet up again and play football again and to have the fans back in again, which is great and awesome. So, you're obviously delighted to be finally back on that pitch. It's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Delighted, of course. A bit of timber to lose. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but it's great to be out there again running and just, just to get that release, really. So, it's awesome. But we're not even out of May yet, and teams are already back in training. They're playing friendly, some even announcing signings. It doesn't feel a bit odd to be preparing for the new campaign so early. Yeah, yeah, um, exactly as you say. Um, you're, it's, it's, it seems all too early. A lot of lads will be kind of finishing um, the season, and then they will do pre-season as normal, and have the six weeks off, and then start again in August, which is probably the best bet to give the players kind of a sort of rest. Um, at the same time, so but at the same time, a lot of lads are eager um, to get back on the pitch. So actually, <laughs> it works both ways, really. I'm well, sure it's going to be a fantastic uh, season for you at uh, Proms Grove now. Uh, but, uh, let's take a little uh, trip back to when you first started getting into football. I mean, a lot of the lads we've spoken to on Team Talk, past and present, have said that football was a massive part of their life. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's the same for all of us. You get involved with football; it's always been a big part of us. What's that the same for you growing up? Yes, yes, definitely, massively. Um, I remember being young, like I didn't even have my own kind of football football boots, I didn't have my own pair of boots, and then my friend kind of gave me these football boots and said, okay, come training with me, and that's when the journey kind of started, when I was around the age of nine and eight, kind of, when I joined the team, so my friend actually gifted me with some boots that I can actually play, so, yeah, it's an awesome time now, looking and reflecting back at that. But well, every journey, as they say, begins with a single step. So, how did your footballing journey really begin getting towards the semi pro kind of level? Um, yeah, so, um, so I thought that it kind of started with um, Coventry United actually. Um, Coventry United um, reserves, um, really. Um, so, I was playing, um, actually, um, I actually started out at Copswood, really and playing for their first team there. Oh, well, yeah, no. When I was about 17. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I think I was a blue nose guy, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then I obviously progressed over to the reserves, um, which Mick um, was actually looking after. And then essentially I got the recognition from Edwin um, from the reserves and I was able to break through to um, kind of first team and kind of move up the ranks and kind of get recognition from teams. So that's that's pretty much where it began really, at Coventry United with us. I mean, when you uh, joined the first year, you would have been about 18, 19 years old. Uh, but you know, playing football at such a young age can have its disadvantages. I know obviously you had to juggle not only football but your studies as well. I mean, how how did you balance the two? Yeah, yeah, it's it's one of the things that um, that we don't normally think of, but actually it's actually a crucial thing to be able to perform excellently in both, to be able to devote a lot of time in your studies as well as and be able to perform and train and meet the requirements. So you've got to be really wise. And for me, um, luckily, I've got um, a good kind of family background where my mum was actually able to tell me, um, take some time to take to your studies at the same time as, because yeah, as you know, you would love to be out there running endless hours playing football. But actually, it's like you said, kind of mixing both and actually making sure you do well in both as well. Well. During your time at United, you were part of what many would call the, the glory years of Coventry United. 
Uh, you were a big part of two of the three titles that we've wrapped up today. So you won the uh, MFL Division 2 in your debut campaign, then Division 1 the following year. Let's start with Division 2 first. Basically with the likes of Fairfield, Villa, Leicester Rose, great teams. But we won by a comfortable 15 point margin. I mean, was it as comfortable as the, um, the winning margin would suggest? Yes, I would, I would say yes. Um, we had a great team, um, like you said. Those were the glory days. And um, playing amongst with the players like Chris Cox and so on. And um, for me, I was just kind of establishing myself in the team. Um, but yeah, it was great to be out there with the guys and great to learn from, from Chris Cox and from all the other players as well. So yeah, so it was, it was a very comfortable win. I would just come in and say, wow, this team is amazing and I could just contribute whatever I could. And, yeah. <laughs> well, the Division 1 title fight was a little bit harder, I think we could say. A highly competitive league, you had Bronze Grove, Neaton Griff, Litchfield, they didn't give us a second to breathe, especially uh, the way we ended the season with sort of like 12 matches in a month mm. due to the, uh, the terrible winter. But how determined were you and the squad to get over the line that year? Yeah, well, we were very determined. Um, we had put in a lot of hard work during the season, and obviously our goal was promotion. So just kind of put in the last bits and to kind of just push through um, was essential. So that was that was amazing. And having won the league that year, it was a great achievement from um, from the board down to the fans, down to the players, and to kind of everyone just put together and it was one final push and we got it done, which was amazing. Well, during your time with Coventry, you lined up alongside some very talented players, uh, especially in midfield. And obviously, you mentioned, you mentioned Coxie, mm -hmm. one of the best players Coventry I've ever seen. Uh, Bridge Blythe, Kevin Bortle, who always had EFL experience. How did being paired with players of that calibre develop, uh, benefit your development? Um, I think um, when you play with such great players, like you mentioned, Chris Cox, Kevin Thornton, and um, Rich Blythe, like. Um, I was, I was a little bit younger than, than all of them, but the, I, I think they were much more mature players than me and they were better players than me. Um, so being able just to sit under them and just be able to learn from them is, is massive really. Um, you kind of learn your trade from the likes of Ken Thornton, he never loses the ball and like you watch him and you see him and you're like wow and it, it rubs off you and when you've got winners, when you've got excellent players in your team, it just rubs off you and you develop and you become a much better player. When you joined the Running Greens, you were a developing player, much like we were a developing club. I mean, when you joined, it was um, you know we're in their second season of uh, existence. At least when you got into the first team. Uh, looking back on where we were when you joined and where we are now, are you surprised how far the club has come? Um, no, not really. To be fair, um, I think from the start, the club has always had a massive vision, and we've always had. Um, a direction where we wanted to go. We've always had achievements and we've always had expectations from both the staff, the players, the managers, everyone. And it's a club that wants to be placed, that wants to go places. And um, so, so yeah, so it was expected. I, I knew with the amount of vision, the amount of commitment the club put in and kind of every effort everyone put in, I knew it was only time that would tell where we would actually achieve a lot of, a lot of stuff. But everyone knew how good you were back in those days. I mean, progressively, through the league, you got better and better and better. And I think everyone at, at that time started to expect a little bit too much from you. Like they expect five star matches every single week, and everyone knows it's, it's just you can't keep that up. Mm. So, can those expectations have a detrimental effect, or maybe even a positive effect? Does it uh, give you a bit more determination? Yes, absolutely. And um, there's two sides to that question, actually. And um, there's some players that actually. Um, crumble under the pressure, um, but like myself, um, I like to perform excellently. Um, I like to perform brilliantly on every pitch, and like I'll be mad at myself if I didn't put in 100%. And I guess that's kind of always been my kind of principle to work hard on the pitch, to give everything for the club and um, for the for the players around me and for the fans and so on. So yeah, so um, for me, it fed me really, and um, the expectations and. Myself being an athlete and being a person who tries to achieve excellence, it actually pushed me on to to achieve those performances and and yeah, I'm glad that I was able to win a few money matches. <laughs> I could say it was more than a few. But believe me, it was more than a few. Uh, we've, we've seen all sorts of players at United over the years. We've seen powerhouses, pit bulls, speedsters, acrobats, but. 
in my opinion, you're probably the most technically gifted player that Colts United has, has ever seen. Where did that technical ability come from? Was it just natural, or did you really have to grab to develop that skill? Oh, thank you for the compliment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, in terms of technical ability, it's something that I really had to learn. It's something that didn't come natural to me. Um, that's something that I really had to um, kind of take time out outside of football. In my own spare hour, I was in kind of practice um, and so on. And like it's evident on the pitch now, but it's kind of those time behind those hidden hours or those hidden sessions that you do for yourself um, that really kind of bring this out. So it's all about hard work, really. But hard work certainly pays off, doesn't it? Exactly. Well, you'll certainly go down as one of the most loyal players in Coventry United history. I'm sure a lot of people will know you had offers coming out of your ears at one point. You turned down every single one of them to stay with the Red and Greens. Why was your dedication to the club so strong? Um, like I kind of mentioned it before as well. Um, so firstly, it's the vision that the club has um, with the owners and so on. Um, I had Terry as well, um, who was my manager at the, at the current time as well. Um, and it's just the vision and the characters and the fans and the community that were built um, around really um, that really kept me here and um, I felt at home, I felt welcomed, I felt loved and when, you, when you're in such an environment you just want to win more, you want to give back to the club and you want to play for the manager, you want to play for those around you. So. Of course there came a time when you knew it was the right time to move on, where did you make the decision to end your stay with the club? When did, when did you think it was the right time? Um, that's, a, <laughs> that's a difficult question, man. Um, I guess, yeah, that's, you caught me that. <laughs> you caught me that. <laughs> but yeah, we can come back to that one after, if, you, if you'd like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah of course. Uh, um, I believe everyone knew that your times would eventually take you further afield, uh, higher up the leagues, because we all knew the, the talent was there. Many knew eventually um, that you, you, know, you, you end up leaving United, obviously what you say, but the club has always said, we don't send them in the way of players who want to better themselves, who want to push themselves up higher up the leagues, but was it a difficult decision for you personally to decide, right, I've, I've done well at United, now it's time to move on? Yeah, it was very difficult. It was very difficult leaving the manager, leaving the players and the friendships that I made, um, leaving the fans, leaving the owners, and like it's a hard decision because, like I said, it's a it's a community based. It's, we it thrives community wise, and we like I, there's so many friends that you make, and it's it's hard to separate um, from those friends and from those friendships that you made. So, so yeah, it was difficult, um, but. I was able to do it in the end, so. <laughs> you made a staggering 143 appearances for Coventry United. That's a lot of game oh. time. I think it puts you in the top five for the all-time appearance holders. I know Coxie's up there, Josh O'Grady. Uh, so you're in sort of illustrious company in that list. Uh, do you look back on your time with United fondly? Yeah, yeah. Just the other day, I was scrolling through my pictures and my galleries, and I went, I went and I saw myself in the red. Um, United shirt, and I was like, "Wow, look at that! That's some that's some great achievements that we've been able to do, and so on." So yeah, so here and there, like I'll go to the Butts Arena to try watch a game, and so on, and it just brings so much memories and what we've achieved as a club, as as players, and what Terry has achieved as a manager, and Edwin, of course, as well. But yeah, it's it's great. Uh, the club who turned your head eventually was Leamington. Uh, a club at step two of the non-league period. I mean, the move to the Braves was the first real transfer, the first major transfer of your career. Uh, the first time you had to fit into a new team, new surroundings, uh, a, new, a new community. Was it a challenge to settle in after so long at one club? Um, yes, like when, you, when you're at a club um, for so long, like you go around and like you know everyone, and everyone greets you. And when you step in a new club, it's it's a it's a completely different thing. It's almost like you have to learn how to socialise again. <laughs> but actually, um, at Leamington, um, the players were very welcoming. Uh, Paul Hollis, the manager, and um, was great. And me and him had a chat, and he was able to fit me in. But the lads were great. And um, like I said, you have to kind of social, learn how to socialise again, but it was a great experience and I was able to click on with the guys there and pretty much instantly, so that was, that was quite a good experience for me. 
going from step five to step two in one go, it's a massive step to take for any player. Um, did you feel you were ready for that challenge and did you feel comfortable against step two opposition when you got onto the pitch? Yeah, like stepping into st step two is obviously, it's obviously a big step. And um, the kind of the, the main thing for me was just kind of getting used to the level, getting used to how we train and how we, how we um, play the game tactically and so on. And these are the things that I kind of had to learn and kind of step into kind of thing. And um, so yeah, so it, it does take its time, but you've, you just gotta, you just gotta have an attitude to learn, I think. Um, just go out there, work hard and try to learn. And yeah, um, it was difficult um, kind of first few months trying to get, um, trying to get my, myself kind of ready and try to fit in. But eventually I was able to overcome the kind of difficulty and it became the norm kind of thing for me. So. From Lamington you switched to a familiar foe of Coventry United, namely Bromsgrove Sporting, where you've become a real mainstay at the uh, Step 3 side. Are you enjoying your time at the Victoria Ground? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, Bromsgrove being one of our rival clubs and um, with Coventry United, um, it's obviously a great club as well. Um, they're also going places and it's a great place to be. Um, we have um, a great fan base and um, great managers as well. And yeah, great directors as well. So it's obviously it's a great place to be, and it's it's a great club, and that's going places. So I, I thoroughly enjoy my time there. And so on. Well, I think I'll speak for all of us. We say we wish, wish you and Bromsgrove Grove the very best of luck for the new season. Looking ahead to what's to come, new seasons around the corner. Uh, but looking further afield than that, what is your ultimate goal in football? I mean, you're doing very well at the moment. You're a good club. You've got, you've got your whole career in front of you. How far do you think your talents could take you? Ah, oh, that's another that's another good question. <laughs> You're hitting me with all these questions now. <laughs> See, we're full of them. <laughs> but yeah, like like football for me is a great place to be, and more than anything, it's a place where it's it's all about community for me. It's all about making friends. All about um, all about making friends. All about keeping fit, keeping. And physically and mentally fit, as well as um, as well as because um, because as some of you guys know, um, I'm a Christian and kind of my goal is to go out there and just kind of be a bright light or a shining light to others and kind of introduce Christ by the way I behave and just by the way I conduct myself. So I think that's my main goal with football and um, is to build a community, but actually to share Christ with or share Christ with as many people as I come in contact with. And, um, and yeah, so whatever the future holds, wherever I'm at, step one or pro, um, I'm, just, I'm just willing to embrace it. I'm willing to work hard. I'm willing to learn new things. I'm willing to build community and just build friendships and building friendships that last. And similar to my friendships with, with the, the club here at Coventry United, I think it's a friendship that, I, that will last forever and that I'll cherish for the rest of my life. Really. I think the, the fans will certainly cherish you as well. You've given them so many fantastic memories over the years. I mean, even a couple of years later, you're still in the hearts and minds of the Coventry United faithful. Uh, finally, to wrap things up, uh, talk us through some of your favourite memories wearing the red and greens. Oh, favourite. There's so many. Um, but the two that come into mind is winning the league. And especially as, like you said, I, I was a developing player there. And um, just to be around people who are hungry, people with vision, people with goals, and just being in that environment, I think changed me as well. Not just in my football, but in my in my workplace as well. As well, I wanted to be a champion. I wanted to win, and winning those two titles really boosted my morale. And I felt I felt good just outside of outside of football as well, knowing that I have achieved. And I won the league as well, which is which is great for my for my well-being and for my health as well. So I'm just grateful to Coventry United and and so on. But but yeah, it, it was winning those two titles, biggest achievement, and I'll remember those <laughs> for as long as I live. Really. <laughs> well, you create memories that will live forever in the minds of Coventry United. So we're all very very grateful for that, and of course, grateful for another fantastic interview. Gift, thank you so much, mate. Thank you, Liam. Thank you, and the team.
Right, well, well uh, maybe we've seen Gift further down the line if United can go up to step three. Got a bit of catching up to do, but we won't see you there. Uh, thank you very much to Gift Moose for joining us here on CU TV's Team Talk. As always, want to hear from you. Who do you want to hear from next, past or present? Goalkeeper, defender, midfielder, striker. Get one of the mascots of everyone, I don't care. Just let us know who you want to hear from next. Uh, Connor saying here, no, you don't want to hear from him, guys. You, trust me, you don't want to hear from him. <laughs> Maybe, maybe we'll do a media special one day. We'll see, we'll see. So let us know in the comment section and on Twitter at Cobb United TV who you want to hear from next. Uh, hit the like button if you enjoyed today's show and uh, leave any comments or feedback. And we'll share with your friends. Get the message out there. We want as many red and green packing that Bucks Park Arena as many as possible next season in our new league, the United Counties League. It's going to be a new experience, isn't it? And uh, hopefully you can join us for the ride. So from myself, Liam Cook, Gift, everyone at Coventry United Football Club, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time on Team Talk.